Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models. As always, this video is brought to you by my Patreon campaign. Link in the description below if you want to help support my videos. And uh, today I'm going to be working on a... Um, it's a model that was made for me. I don't really... There's not a set role for it. I'm going to play it as a Gorkonaut in the near future. It could also be a battle wagon. Uh, it could be a looted wagon. We'll see. So it'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait to keep working on it. I've been uh, working on it over the last week, and I'm going to keep working on it today. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be really cool. I'm work getting prepared for an upcoming tournament that I'm going to this Sunday, and I'm really excited. So let's get started. Adam, you missed a spot, and shout out to Mr. Cody Roo, who made this model. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. Hey everyone, so today I'm working on this model. As you can see, it is amazingly built. It's built for me by Cody Roo, and I'm working on it over the last week. It's not done yet. I still have to clean up the blues mostly here, paint this orc. I don't know how I'm going to paint it like either a silver orc or just like a, the head of an orc, which one or the other. And then clean up the blues. I just put on, I painted some of the, you know, worn out treads, uh, not treads, worn out pieces of other army colors that will be... Uh, you know, put on that way it breaks up the blues, and you know, because we're deaf skulls, we steal other people's stuff. And I'm going to clean up the guns as well. So, as I said, a bit of cleanup, I got to paint here as well. Um, and clean up here, yeah. As I said, it was painted a little sloppily on the blues, and I'm going to be cleaning up after. I really even, you know, the garrots are really nice details. And this was made for me by Cody Roo a couple of years ago, actually. I've been really wanting to paint it for a while, but it's one of the models I've been actually kind of avoiding painting uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanted to give it the respect it deserves and take my time and paint it right. And so today I'm going to be working on the face. Um, it is at the point now where I, I have a tournament coming up in a few days on Sunday. And I believe this guy's already like three, he's already like three color minimum worthy, right? So I'm going to take some gray liner. I'm going to paint the, uh, the teeth on it. Um, but yeah, so today I'm going to work on the face because it just needs some attention. I'm nowhere near done this guy. I think uh, probably a few more hours at least on him. But um, I am happy the way he's coming out. He's turning out, he's coming along well. It is cold outside. I was talking about last week about how, you know, it's like pre-winter. Now it's just winter. I know it's only November, but oh my goodness. And I know what you're thinking. I do live in Canada, but it's not normally this bad. Like, I would like to show you outside. It is just nuts. Um, we've gotten a lot of snow, and it's really cold. It's a like high of minus... Sorry, it's going to go down to minus 14 today, Celsius. And... Uh, We've got a lot of snow so far. Just... There we go. So my Morkonaut has a lot of white on this, on his face. So I'm going with a lot of dark black, uh, dark gray essentially, but black in this case, because I really want to just have a contrast between my Morkonaut and my Gorkonaut. And as I said, this guy doesn't have a necessarily set role yet, um, but I'm going to play him as a Gorkonaut for the near future because I really like the Gorkonaut. And he, this guy does have the same height. You know, I have a Morkonaut right here, so we can put them beside each other. So, this guy. Right? Pretty much same height. You know, same. Uh, this guy has about the same base size. So it takes up the same footprint. And so he, my Morkonaut, who's very dusty, um, and my this guy, you know, works very well as a Morkonaut and Gorkonaut combination. I think that'd be really good. Uh, I'm gonna also try him out like as a loot wagon or as a battle wagon with a claw. As I said, we have a few options. This does have a grot. Uh, Cody Roo is such an exquisite eye of detail, eye for detail. He put a garage here and the red button, so don't press that, which I've been making sure that garage does not press that. So, as I said, it does have that looted wagon feel as well. 
For those who don't know, Luda Wagons used to have a rule. Well, there used to be a vehicle called a Luda Wagon, and it's apparently going to come back in the next uh, chapter approved, I believe, from Games Workshop. So now I'm just taking some brass scorpion, and I'm painting this eyepiece. Um, there used to be a vehicle for orcs called a Luda Wagon, which is basically you know a tank taken by orcs. And it used to have a rule called don't press that. It, uh, basically, if the if the Gretsch, if the Gretsch inside, the uh, the tank pressed that, it had to move, uh, I think it was full speed up, and could not fire this turn. It just had to move. And it was just a way of like, hey, don't press that button, and then you know someone presses the button, and you lose your turn. And it was a lot of fun. Um, again, my friend Cody Rue loves that vehicle. And um, I loved his, you know, his custom stuff, and he made me one. It was really cool for Christmas a couple years ago. So I'm really, as I said, I'm really wanting to paint this guy up. And so when I started Orcs again, I decided pretty quickly on that this was going to be one of the first models I wanted to re I wanted to paint. Um, you know, I finished up the Killicans. You can see them maybe in the background there. They're all done from last week, and I'm using uh, I think ten of them in the upcoming tournament. And they have two squads of five. So. Good. Now we'll paint some silvers. But this is good. He's going to come along quite well. To, and uh, by the end of this video, I think he should be, you know, ready for... Like, he'll be ready for the tournament. And if he's not done by the tournament, I'll bring him back here and just finish him up for a day. You know, just finish up all the details. But right now, he definitely is, uh, you know, battle. he's tournament worthy in the sense that uh, most tournaments don't work, you know. He's not going to win best painted yet, but uh, he definitely is not three color minimum. He has definitely way more than three colors. And I'm excited to try them out in this tournament. This upcoming tournament, I'm going to have fun. I'm bringing a, a fun list. By mean fun, I mean a lot of big bads. Um, it's a 2,000 point tournament, and I'm bringing orcs, right? So my choices are lots and lots of orc boys, right? Or my opponent and I are going to have some fun. And uh, I'm going to do that. Because, I again, I could bring a lot of orc boys. I have probably 170, 180 orc boys. Um, but I decided not to because it is a tournament. And in a tournament setting, do you really want to just be placing and moving orc boys? Um, it takes up a lot of time to do. And, you know, what? it's not a bad list. Like, again, most people in a 2,000-point tournament won't be... You know, designing their list to fight 180 boys. Um, heck, my list won't. It won't be terrible against 180 boys, but it's not designed to kill 180 boys. Um, most people in these larger tournaments design their lists to take out, you know, the big bads. Um, this particular tournament is Brawl in the Hall, run by my friend Dave. And... Dave's tournament, you can bring one super heavy. So again, it'll be one Wraith Knight. One... Um, well, I guess you can bring one super heavy slot. So people could bring you know, multiple of the little knights. Um, yeah. So my list has to be able to take out one of those. Um... The craziest thing, like, if someone brings a stopper, which I'm totally going to see coming, I'll report that back next week. My bet is someone's going to bring a stopper. If someone brings a stopper, stompas are going to be annoying because they're a thousand points and they have a lot of wounds, right? They have uh, 48 wounds, I believe. 40 wounds, 40, 48 wounds, 40 wounds, I believe. I've never played with one, so I actually don't know uh, the exact number of wounds for the new edition. One day I'll get a stompa. Uh, so, for a stompa, because orcs have a set ballistic skill, right? Five, it's a hit. It's 
not modified by the number of wounds. And so Stompas shoot as normal until dead. So I have to, in my list, I'm like, can I take out a Stompa in a turn if I have to? And the answer is maybe. This is a similar list to, it's not identical, but it's a similar list to what I ran against Dave who brought a, um, a super heavy tank, right? I think it was a Bane Blade. Might not have been. Um, and I pretty much nerfed, I, I almost got it dead. If I remembered some of the rules, it would have been, I think it would have been dead. So my list does have a lot of firepower and it does have a lot of D. Bringing a lot of rockets. Um, you know, my Morganaut, my Gorkonaut, my Ludas, my Cans are going to be rockets. Um, bring a shock attack gun, of course, because for 80 points, oh my goodness. You know, it's it's amazing. I actually have my old, while well, I was, I cleaned up my workshop. Well, cleaned up ice loosely. I'm organizing models and stuff I found a bunch of old models that I'm going to keep some, paint some, sell some, give away some. But, uh, for example, I found oh, 60 of those old plastic Gretchen. And you know what? I'm not really into running the Gretchen lists. They're cool. They're fun. But a local uh, player named Dave, and it's a different Dave than the Dave who's running Brawl in the Hall. Just, I think, one in every three or four war gamers named Dave which I, by the way, I love those commercials for um, OntarioJobShop.ca where they're like, we salute the employee of the month. The rest of we'll just call Dave. And then at the end, they're like, don't complain about this commercial, Dave. That's a total Dave move, Dave. <laughs> I like to rest my friend Dave with that. Um, but back to Dave. So one of the fellow gamers in this area named Dave, he is a bit of a gretchen a -holic. And he has composed a... He has like 500 of those plastic rots. So I was like, you know what? Might as well donate to the cause. And so I did. I'm going to... I've just I let him know that I'm going to give him them. And he wants them. And I will... Um, get into them sometime in the near future. So Dave, if you're out there, Mr. Grot Guy, enjoy the grots. Um, I also found an old metal, um, one of the, like the very first shock attack gun orcs. It's from my, my rogue trader days, basically my second edition days. And so, uh, he will be repainted. I'm just stripping him as we speak. He's in this, this can of green stuff, not green stuff, liquid green. Yep. It's definitely snowing outside. There are accidents. There goes a fire truck. Um, yeah. As I said, it's. Um, I don't know what we do with that screen yet. I'm thinking of putting up a picture of Dave on it. It'd be kind of funny. Also, my friend Cody Group. Everyone's named Dave. I think this video is going to be called. It's a very Dave move, Dave. We'll see. So. Let's discuss this. Why is everyone named Dave? That is a... If I noticed that, like, I used to work with Dave, obviously. Mini Wargamer Dave, Mini Wargamer.com, and Matt. And I noticed a lot of Matt's as well. I'll get me started on Matt's, because there's a lot of Matt's. But there's a lot of Dave's. Wherever I go is kind of a Dave. There's also a Matt in my local meta as well. Um, I don't think he gets along with one of the Dave's. No, I'm kidding. As you can see, coming along. That's so cool. This guy is looking awesome. If I can get his face done today, um, it'll be good. I'm, I'm really excited to get this guy on the tabletop and all painted. I really did like, I took my time with the grots and really painted them nicely, I think. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking Dave, Cody Rue is going to be 
proud of this paint job. But um, so. Yeah, I'm excited for the tournament. I'm bringing a 2,000 point list. Um, what I've decided to do is do a, some insider videos for my, I'm gonna be really updating my Patreon campaign in the near future. I think I really do wanna keep the, this Patreon campaign going and I decided that if I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it right. So I'm gonna give some attention, make some exclusive videos and uh, yeah, they're gonna see some stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my exact tournament list on um, my Patreon. And that way they can see. Uh, they'll, I'll just talk about why I'm doing each part of my army. And, you know, what goes into my list. That'd be kind of cool. Some exclusive videos. And for my free content, i got to get in gear as well. As you've seen, this month has two battle reports. And that's actually as a result of, number one, I've been filming a bit. But number two, as it changes to my Patreon campaign. I've decided I'm no longer charging per video. I didn't like it. So I'm just doing it per month. That way I can put out as many videos per month as I want. And uh, life's good. So let me just clean up the, the neck. So what I'm going to do is finish up this one part of the eyepiece. And so I'm going to let that dry for a second and then I'll hit it with a shade just to tone down the brass. Clean up the symbol and then paint some blues around that part. And, you know. But look at him, he's definitely coming along. I think he's very blue, but uh, he's blue. Da -da 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 -da. No, um, this guy's gonna be really cool. What else is new and exciting? Uh, winter weather, it's hitting Canada. Probably somewhere in the States as well. Some places in the States pretty hard as well. We've got a lot of snow so far. So I think this is going to be a nasty winter. Um, I had a pretty fun time with Canadian Tire. So let's talk about Canadian Tire. Why not? Let's rant and rave here. So, um, my car needs weird sized tires. So last year at the end of winter, now in Canada, we do, like in most places in the States, we have winter tires, right? We have winter tires. The reason, the main benefits of winter tires are that, you know, they're designed for winter and they do have better traction and they also give your summer tires or, you know, your 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 other non-winter tires a break, right? They, they have, you know, you don't use them all year round. It adds life to them. Life's good. So, um... I had to order winter tires. And so this year, what I usually do is I usually just take them to like Mr. Lube or Jiffy Lube. You don't need an appointment. You, you go sit down and you just, uh, you know, you, just, you basically wait for an hour, but then you get your winter tires on. You know, that's good. No, need, no appointment needed. And if you have a day off or a morning off, you can really get it accomplished. Versus Canadian Tire, where Canadian Tire, you have to book an appointment, and they book up fast. The second people start seeing snow, it books up so fast. So the point where, like, I was there for my appointment on the on November 17th, they were booked until December, like, 14th, 15th, I think, at my local one. So that's pretty crazy. Like, that's, that's pretty crazy ahead of time, right? So you're booking a month in advance. So the problem is we're going to get a lot of snow in the meantime. We've already got a lot of snow. Um, so, yeah, they have to tub it out or go to Mr. Lou. Except this year, I had to get new tires put on my car. So I had to, you know, order them, and I can't put on the new tires. Again, if they were already on rims, it'd be a different story. So this year, I had to suck it up and book an appointment at Canadian Tire. I booked it about uh, three weeks in advance, and they said, no problem. You know, you're, you're, we'll order your, uh, you can order your tires online, have them shipped to the, the that particular location, and then they'll put them on my car at the time of my appointment. I don't even need to pick them up. Cool. So I ordered the tires, 
and they uh, they said they were in stock at you know a certain place. They're gonna ship them to my my location. Awesome sauce, and uh, yeah, like uh, about a week later, I get a notice saying, "Hey, your tires are now at the location. Feel free to pick them up, or if you have an appointment, just keep them there, and they will put them on your car, on your appointment." Oh, I just gotta clean that up too. And uh, so it was cool. Again, didn't question it, no nothing. And then three days before my appointment, at five in the morning, which was weird, I got an email saying, we're extremely sorry for the inconvenience. Your tires are not available. And your order has been canceled and your credit card has been refunded. Which I thought to myself, that's a little odd. Right? That's a little odd, seeing as um, my tires have already arrived at the new, at the location. How are they unavailable now? Like, what happened between when they arrived at the location and today, right? Doesn't make any sense. So I went to the local Canadian Tire, and... I asked them, I said, hey, so are my tires here or not? Like, what's going on? And then they couldn't find them. And I'm like, oh my goodness, these tires are rare because the size is odd. And then I, they looked for about half an hour and they eventually found them. They, they found them and they said that they were there. I'm like, sweet. Okay, that's good. They're, they're there, so they don't know why my order was canceled. But because it was canceled, there was no... Um, there was no connection number between the tires when they arrive. Now, when they when they're there, because they usually keep a name attached to them. They would say J, right, or an order number. But because the order was canceled, there's no name or order number attached to them. So they set them aside with my name on them. And then I get there for my appointment, and once again, it's a different employee. I told them the story, and then all of a sudden they said, "We're really sorry, but your tires aren't here, so you don't really need your appointment, do you?" I said, I, I do need my appointment, and my tires are there. And then, once again, the story, like, they had to go look for my tires again. But in the end, I can't really be too upset. I got my tires on. Should have asked for a slight discount or something due to crazy losing. But, um, nope. They're now on. My car is winter ready. I've weighted it down. i got an oil change. Um, yeah. So, it's, it's getting winter ready. And we'll see how it does. I'm, I do have a winter beater, winter car, but, um, I want to get rid of it this year. It's in really bad shape and I'd prefer to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to donate my winter car, which is just my old car to charity. And then they, you know, write off the metal and then they give me a tax receipt. That way it supports a charity, um, that I, I really do support and, uh, I get rid of my car. So that'll be good. My, my winter beater. And then my, my other car is going to be my full year round car. I really got to clean up these guns. They're a little sloppy. So I'll do that after as well. So basically this, this thing is supposed to be a Gorka nut. Now I figure it's a Gorka nut because it has two sets of twin shooters right there. It has the big gun, which is I'm pretty sure exactly from the, um, the Gorka nut. Uh, Gorka nut head, rockets, claw, and it has a bunch of scorches in the belly gun, which don't really count. But uh, yeah, works. I think it's going to be a good Gorkonaut or a Luda Wagon to death, or we'll, we'll figure it out. So now I'm going to take some uh, Agrex Earthshade, get up all my brass areas on the face, and get that all nice and pretty. And then I'm going to heavily, I'm going to paint some blues, some glowing blues around the eyes, that eye, so it'll tone down a lot of the shininess. There's a brass piece right here. And 
when I'm painting a large model like this, I always like to have at least one or two shades drying at a time. So while the shades are drying, I'm working on another area. So then right now I'm going to take some Nuln Oil and hit the, uh, the silver areas I was just painting on the head, and then maybe later the body. I love this grot riding the, the main gun. That's probably my favorite part of this entire model. So I definitely made sure to focus and give him a little extra love. So that way he really does bring the attention of what looks the model to it. That's a little too much shade. Let's uh, absorb a little bit of it. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. I think it looks pretty good. As I said, I'm working on them for about four or five days on and off. And if you're, I'm trying to keep up as many photos of my work, you know, some progress of what I'm working on, on my Facebook page. I'm trying to be more interactive. You know what, I gotta, I gotta embrace this new amount of technology. I really do. So. What else? I should be hitting 36,000 subscribers in the next little while and 5 million views. That's pretty cool. I just do it for the views and the subscribers, but it's nice to see. And I can't thank you all enough for you know your continued support. It was Patreon Day the other day, so I thank, of course, my Patreon subscribers, but I want to thank everyone who continues to support my videos. You know? These days there are so many content creators, it's really cool to still maintain an audience of the size. I don't know if you can hear the wind in the background. It's just so windy today. It's like feels like minus 15 or something right now. And it's going to get colder. Look at that. This guy's looking good. He's looking real good, buddy. Maybe I'll do some edge highlighting while that's drying. But as you can see, like this guy, I, I'm going to do, of course, a quick dry brush over them to bring out the silvers. I've already done it on all the rest of the silvers here. But uh, I think I think this was it would be tournament ready. It's not completely painted. But uh, I, I think it, it's kind of tournament ready. If I took this to a tournament I would be ashamed. You know, I definitely feel it's more than uh, Three color minimum, which I've been in so many tournaments lately where it's just like three color minimum all the time. I gotta sneeze. Oh, bless me. I hope I don't have a cold. No, I don't have a cold. But, um. <laughs> so this week is Black Friday, Red Thursday. So in Canada, at Canadian Tire, they have Red Thursday, which is the day before Black Friday. Which is pretty funny. I do actually some shopping on this today, so I'll probably pop into Canadian Tire at some point tomorrow during my lunch. I work early tomorrow. Um, but uh, I'm not really that impressed with the deals, to be honest. No. Right now I'm just mixing some lighter gray, which I'm going to use for the edge highlights. Um, I'm not impressed with the deals, to be honest. I, I bought up a lot of stuff last year at Red Thursday, and it seems like all Canadian Tire did for all like the better, the cool, cheap items was that they just put them away for a year, and then um, they put them away for a year, and then took them like I think they put them away for a year, took them out last week so that they could um, you know temporary like. Oh, I missed that one piece. By the way, Adam, you missed a spot. Um, it, I think they just temporarily took them out of the, like, from the back after having them for a year. 
just so they could temporarily raise the prices insanely. So people, oh wow, that's expensive. And then they're like, well, it's on sale next week on Black on you know Red Thursday. There are these cool uh, bottles um, that keep your your drinks warm and cold for a long time. And I bought them last year for fifteen bucks on Red Thursday. And then this year, all of a sudden, last week, I haven't seen them all year round since then at Canadian Tire. And all of a sudden, last week, they appeared back at, on the shelves for like $100. And I was like, uh, that's ridiculous. I paid 15 bucks last year. And then all of a sudden, you see the Red Thursday ad, and it's like, boom, now there are 15. Look at that. Great sale. Great price. And I don't like that mentality. I hate when companies do that. It bugs me. When they artificially inflate their numbers. Now, it happens a lot with companies that go out of business and then they put everything on clearance and then what they do is they raise their prices um, and then they drop them temp they, they artificially drop them so it's actually you know I went to for example Sears in Canada went out of business that's a really Dave move Dave <laughs> I said I have absolutely nothing against people named Dave but that's one of my favorite commercials on the radio those of you who live in Ontario, or maybe there's equivalents like manitobajobshop.ca. So it's the employee of the month. The one you can't live without. The rest, we'll call him Dave. Um, and so, maybe I'll even do a little more aggressive on the edge highlight. No, that's pretty good. You can see it. Um, yeah, it's just annoying. Because it's not a, it's a very dishonest tactic, and you actually get in trouble. Like in Ontario, uh, sorry, in Ontario, in Canada, um, Sears got in trouble for that. They got fined because you can't do that. It's very di misleading to raise your prices to lower them. Highlighting, let's go and I'll paint the non oil on the body on all the silvers that I painted earlier on the body. But as you can see, he's coming along, the face is really coming along. So I paint here, and then I'm going to clean up the blues later and then do an edge highlight as well. And then I probably will just scratch it up a little bit. I'm not going to do as full of a rust. I got tired of that really rusted look that I did on my other models. I really liked it because it looks old and dirty, but it kind of wears on time in time. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of scratching on it for weathering and uh, let it be up to that. There we go. Clean up the guns, clean up the blues. Don't press that button. Look at him. He wants to press it. Maybe I'll paint these parts in the meantime. What color should I do them? Again, black would be really nice. No, that's too black. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a beautiful model. I, once again, can't thank Cody Roo enough. For this awesome model. He, he is such a selfless person. And uh, he does this for, for other people and makes them awesome models or paints people's models for them. I'm pretty sure just out of the goodness of his heart, he painted like all the orc models in the GW, you know, GW, um, the mini wargaming studio. His army is awesome.
Mm-hmm. Cody Rue. Maybe that's it. It's a very Dave move, Dave. Maybe he's trying to bring positivity to the name Dave. I'm just ranting and raving. This is kind of like my therapy, if you will. I just talk and talk and I don't really know what I'm gonna talk about. I kind of just sit down and talk and paint. And wherever life takes me in this conversation, I go. Yeah, he's looking really good. I think this dude is, is looking really nice, and it's going to be fun to use. I've already used him in a couple battle reports. Uh, I got a surprisingly overwhelming, really good response from my first battle report from the new orcs. It got a lot of views, so I'm hoping that the next one does. Q and J. Thinking, yep. I'm gonna start a couple new. I'm gonna put up a couple new videos in the next week. Asking for ideas and questions and stuff, and we'll continue. Some series that I'm working on. Yep. Down for a sec. Silver. Yeah, we're not even done November yet. And everything is Christmas. Of course, it's, as I said, it's tons of snow outside. Every store has been in Christmas mode in Canada since pretty much like back to school season. Most stores used to have to wait till day after Remembrance Day, Remembrance Day, which is November 11th. But it um, doesn't seem that way anymore. Now it's just like, Christmas stuff now. Look at this. He is looking good. As I said, sit down for an hour. We paint together. And stuff happens. Life is good. Look at that. We're... Once this guy's done, I'm probably going to paint... What am I going to paint next? Some bikers? Biker boys? Or maybe the new uh, vehicle that I got in... Um, in... Speed Freaks? Yeah, I'll probably finish painting all my Speed Freak models next. I do have some Burna Boys, like 10 Burna Boys I want to paint. A battle wagon. Like, I sold a bunch of trucks a couple years ago because I had no use for them. I don't use trucks. And then I was cleaning my, my workshop and I figured out, I think I have another five trucks. I think I sold four of them last time. So I had nine trucks at one point. I like big squads of boys. I like big squads and I cannot lie. You other gamers can't deny. You know. That. I like big squads of boys. I'm more of the person to run a squad of 30 then someone run a squad of 10 trucks are cool you know they are a cool thing nothing against them just not my particular cup of tea you know uh, I'm just gonna take some uh, might as well paint the flesh on the orc boy the orc head on the front while I'm waiting for this to dry the shade isn't dry yet for the brass areas by the time I've done this video it should be and I'll finish it up and if you ever want to see the progress on my models that I'm working on, check out my Facebook page. I do, lately I've been trying to keep up with some models, you know, some picks, and I will continue up that trend for a while. At least I will, I will definitely keep trying to 
keep up to date with what I'm working on. I can't find my Wafflesh. It probably fell on the ground or something. Wafflesh, where are you, Wafflesh? Let's strike in green. Oh, there it is, Wafflesh. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, gonna work on some Biker Boys. As I said, I have three squads of two, th of two biker boys that I'll put with a knob. I also have like ten knobs to paint on bikes in the future. Uh, boy, orcs are going to keep me busy for a while. And that's why I was kind of holding off on, pa on painting them until the new codex came out. Because I... wanted to see the new rules. And also, as I said, one, it kind of opened up a gigantic can of worms. That um, will not be fixed anytime. Not be closed anytime soon, I guess. Yeah. Um. I am hungry. Okay, look at that. I just want to get that guy done. wet blend it because it's just the front of the model. Strachan. Strachan. Or bus. <laughs> no, I might as well let it dry. That'll take a minute. So this guy's face down here will be nice and dry. I'm, I'm doing a checkered pattern around these little pieces here. Just got to finish it up. Mm -hmm. As I said, life is pretty good. Can't complain. Working hard on this guy, and uh, he's done. Biker boys, get them done. I I could paint an orc model for a while a day, and then I have a squad of gigantic squad of old plastic boys that everyone would do with. Probably paint them up. The old plastic ones. in goth armor and we'll see about them. I have some boys with shooter, big shooters, some, a few metal grots that I'm going to keep. Um, some trucks, some trucks, definitely some trucks. Um, yeah, it's going to be a busy, busy next little while. I'm just going to right there. Sorry, I'm organizing my guys as we speak. Cool. All right, so a little bit more brass. Where the brass here is. I'll do the blues on, oh, I missed that one patch. I think he's gonna be looking good. We're gonna have fun. All right, so now I'm gonna paint the blue around the eye part, which is a very similar blue, but I'll make sure it's bright uh, in the end from 
so that we have contrast from the body. This Gorgonaut, I think is going to be cool. Yeah, I'm actually getting some of my Christmas shopping done. I've already gotten mm, a couple people done. I am trying to be a little more proactive this year than previous years. Yep. And it'll all be good. I'm uh, ordering my girlfriend's gift on Friday because I think it will go on sale for for Black Friday. Um, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that because that way I can get her what she wants and I save a little bit of money so she doesn't uh, get mad at me for spending too much money. <laughs> there we go. So the golden it's the glowing and then we are going to just simply As I said, this is a little watered down. It is a bit thinner. Jimmy apparently wants food, and he's gonna bug me. So I'm expecting eventually you're gonna start hearing him like tap the door like cats do. There we go. Now let's add a little more. Let's thin it down a little bit even more and add some Lothar and blue and work it up to a like a, almost a white or a ghost white pretty much this will probably be the last step that I work on today because we're 45 minutes into the video so technically I could have just used techless blue I don't have any. I ran out of Techless Blue um, about a week ago and I haven't had the chance to um, get more Techless Blue. So I'm going to focus more on the central areas. This part. And then the outer. And that's Jimmy, as I predicted. Yep, he knows I'm talking about him. Jimmy the cat. Bugging Jay for food since 2017. Cool. Once again, this time I'm going to a uh, white uh, closer to Lothar Blue. <laughs> He's incorrigible. I will feed him after this. I promise I do feed him. There's no way not to feed Jimmy because those of you know who own cats, they will always let you know when they're hungry. Like right now, again, I can't. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's uh, I'm 
just gonna paint a little bit over this part. There we go. There we go. And then finally, just some. Uh, we'll add some white to it. And. There we go. Look at that. All right, so we're 50 minutes in. Jimmy is very hungry, so I am going to end now. So that way I can uh, go feed Jimmy. And I think he's looking pretty well. Look at that, we worked a lot in the face. I hope you got some stuff done today as well. All right, that concludes my painting with Jay. I really hope you got some stuff done too and that you are reading a world slowly but surely of unpainted models. I am starting to really see some empty shelves and that makes me happy. Of course, I still have a lot left to paint. It's making me sad. That's okay. <laughs> so, as always, this is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. Link in the description below if you want to help support my campaign. As you can see, their names go by my head. It's because of them that I keep making my videos for free and then really enjoy it. Stay tuned for more painting videos. And uh, once again, a huge thank you to Mr. Cody Rue for giving me this model. I can't thank you enough, man. This is so awesome. I'm enjoying painting it. Stay tuned for more Painting with Jay. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting. With me.